It's been a long road for Browns fans. Not making the playoffs since 2002, they've had the longest drought of any team in the NFL. Well, that finally came to an end on Sunday. The Browns beat the Steelers and they secured one of the wild card spots next weekend. My question was how exactly did they do this? What changes did Kevin Stefanski make in order to fix this team? To answer this question, I went through their film at the start of the season and compared how they played from before the bye week to after as it tells a really compelling story. One of my big and major takeaways was just how different Baker Mayfield played from the start of the season to the finish. It was this change that made a huge difference for this team. To illustrate this, I want you to check out his stats and grades from before the bye to after. Sure, Baker threw a higher percent of touchdowns on his passes in his first eight weeks, but the mistakes were a big issue. An interception rate of over 3% is pretty bad. Additionally, check out the differences between his pro football focus grade and his adjusted net yards per attempt as well. Going from a 67 to an 88 in PFF and going from 6.2 to 7.7 .7 in adjusted net yards are both huge improvements. Needless to say, this drastically helped the Browns. Now, going through the film, what I saw different was mainly the level of comfort that Baker had with this offense and how that changed over the course of the season. He seemed much more confident in his ability to read the defense. He used this to make better decisions and make more well-defined throws after the bye. For example, earlier in the season, it didn't feel like Baker always trusted his eyes to make the correct throw. Like on this play, the Browns are running a smash concept. This is a high-low read on the sideline. On this one, you can see Baker reading the underneath flat zone defender, but for some reason he doesn't throw the corner. His feet are planted, he's not under any pressure, and there's a clear window for this throw before the receiver broke at the numbers. If Baker threw it, this pass could have easily gained 15 yards through the air. Instead, he threw it to his running back. Now, to Baker's credit, his pass was accurate and Hunt was able to gain 10 yards. However, the correct decision is the corner, and the reason why I bring up this play in the first place is that it illustrates a bigger trend. Baker struggled to throw with timing in this offense at the beginning of the year. This is a big reason why he had so many hit or miss performances earlier in the season. He simply didn't always trust his eyes to make the necessary throw when he had them. The other thing I saw was that his vision was also a bit hit or miss as well. Like he'd miss an underneath linebacker and this would get him into trouble. For example, in his same game against the Steelers, Mayfield threw a god awful pick. Watch his eyes before he threw it. He didn't even look before it was out of his hands. Before the snap, he was able to identify the Steelers were in man coverage, which is good, but instead of checking where the safeties were after the snap, he never did that after taking the ball. He never saw the robber safety. This is really bad. Like I've seen some bad interceptions in my day, and this could probably be one of the worst ones I've seen in a while. Outside of this issue, another thing I saw was that Mayfield didn't always find his check down. Like he'd have a player open underneath, and he'd instead stare down a sideline receiver pump faking and not staying in schedule with this offense. This happened way too many times for my liking. I saw this all over his film from the start of the season. Now after the bye, a lot of these issues started to disappear. They simply didn't happen nearly as much as Baker got more and more comfortable with his offense. Baker finally seemed to trust his scheme and this offense really started to click. He threw with better timing, he threw with better anticipation, and he got better at predicting where the receivers were going to be and he did a good job of placing the ball in stride. This consistently helped him move the chains even against some of the best defenses. For example, his game against the Giants was clinic tape where he did this up and down the field. The way Baker identified pre-snap where he should be looking, to the way he threw accurate well-timed passes really helped his offense. What this tells me is that early on, Baker was still fully getting used to this scheme. If you look at this offense, Kevin Stefanski has done a really good job of tailoring his scheme to Baker's skill set. He has done a good job of creating defined reads before the snap so that he understands how to stay in structure with his scheme. Many of these concepts are the classic Shanahan West Coast offense. This is good since it really fits this offense and what the Browns currently have. They use a ton of quick game, they use a fair amount of run pass options, and they do a good job of pairing the run game to create bootleg rollouts where Baker can use his athleticism. Combined with a pretty talented wide receiving core, this offense really seems to work. Now, there are some things that Baker can definitely get better at. For example, his footwork is still a bit erratic at times, and he'll sometimes throw in an accurate pass where he doesn't fully shift his way through his follow through. A lot of times this results in a sailed pass, but other times the ball is left behind his target. The other thing I saw, and this is objectively his biggest issue, is how Baker deals with pressure. It's by far his biggest enemy. It really forces him into making poor decisions. Let me show you an example. As you can see, TJ Watt took an incredibly well-timed step off the line of scrimmage. He was in the backfield in less than one and a half seconds. This is elite level speed. What's crazy is how Baker reacted to avoid the sack. This is legitimately incredible. 
I honestly don't know many quarterbacks that could step around this and avoid getting taken down like Baker did here. Now, while this part is certainly awesome, what he did after this initial escape is I really want you to focus on. He displayed some Johnny Manziel level decision making. He drifted backwards and then he tried to lob it to his receiver by the sideline. It was a poor decision and I don't understand why he made it. The thing about Baker is that this pressure issue showed up all over his film. It's been a problem of his since he's entered the league. Check out his stats and how much better he plays in a clean pocket versus when he plays under pressure. In a clean pocket, Baker is probably a top 8 to top 10 quarterback. However, and this is a huge however, when he's under pressure, Baker could be a bottom 5 quarterback. A 4% interception rate, a 42 pro football focus grade, and only passing for 4.5 yards per attempt on his throws. These are all terrible metrics. Now, I do know that every quarterback gets worse under pressure. That's 100% true across the board. But the point I'm making is that the difference between good Baker in a clean pocket versus bad Baker in a pressured pocket is so drastically different. This is something we really have to pay attention to as it could be his Achilles heel in future games. While this is definitely a negative, there is a silver lining. The Browns actually have one of the best offensive lines in the entire NFL. If I was running the Browns, I would do whatever it takes to keep that. They are ranked second in pass blocking efficiency according to Pro Football Focus. During the season, they only allowed a pressure on 15% of their snaps. If you compare that to some of the other lines across the league, the average line gives up a pressure on 24% of their snaps. The worst line for comparison is the New York Jets and they allowed a pressure 37% of the time. I don't want to bring Sam Darnold into this, but there's a pretty good reason why he's seen ghosts. Maybe I'm just spitballing here, but a 37% pressure rate is probably a big reason. Regardless, and going back to the Browns, having this offensive line really does help Baker Mayfield. So to give credit to this, we need to point to the Browns hiring Bill Callahan this offseason. If you know anything about offensive line coaching, Callahan is one of the best coaches in all of football. He knows how to get the most out of his players. He does a great job teaching technique, and this has been true of his time in DC and his time in Dallas. In fact, I was even lucky enough to meet the guy, and frankly, you can see just how happy I was to talk to him. Now, outside of Bill Callahan, we need to give them credit for signing Jack Conklin to play right tackle and for drafting Jedrick Wills as well. They have clearly helped this offense. They have both helped keep Baker upright in the past game, and they've also done a fantastic job of blasting open holes for the running backs. This team, as most of y'all know, features one of the best one-two punches in all of football. Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt are both really good. Chubb is one of the best running backs in the entire league, and he's gotten better every single season since he came out of Georgia. What's interesting is that one of the things that we talked about in this very channel over the offseason was that I expected the Browns to run a lot of two-back outside zone. While this team does run outside zone and inside zone a fair bit, their use of counters and powers is something that I'm very happy to see. I was really worried that Kevin Stefanski wouldn't call these runs, but he's more than done that this season. Chubb was awesome on these last year, and he continues to make big plays on these carries too. Now, if we go back to the original question I posed at the beginning of this video, how did Kevin Stefanski fix the Browns? In my opinion, he did this in the following three ways. First, he designed a scheme that allowed Baker to quickly identify his matchups and throw the ball in rhythm. This scheme has really helped Baker quickly read and react. It's a big reason why Baker is much more successful this season. The scheme with its design checkdowns and quick progressions also negates the effects of killer pass rush too. The other thing that Stefanski did is that he paired that passing game with the run game. With having an offensive line coach like Bill Callahan, the pair works really well together to run the wide zone stretch game and bootleg off of it to create some really big plays. On stretch runs, design cutbacks, and the mixture of power and counter like we've already talked about, they created some massive holes for the running backs. They both do such a good job getting the most out of their players, and since they invested in their offensive line, it really helped pay dividends all season. Clearly, what Kevin Stefanski has done for this team is great. He's finally brought hope back to the city of Cleveland. In my opinion, he should be this season's coach of the year. At this point, it honestly doesn't really matter how well the Browns do in the playoffs. They're finally living up to their potential. After all those years of turmoil, this hire has really changed the Browns. If they can get more defensive help, primarily in the secondary, this team should be extremely competitive next season as well. Well, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel as well. Thanks again, and for my latest updates, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.